Hello again. In my last episode, I've shown you how to bring in a Marvelous Designer garment into DAS Studio for rendering, and we did this without the avatar. So in this episode, I'll show you how we can pose the avatar and add a posed version of our garment so that it looks funky in the render. Let's have a look at it. Here's what we've ended up with last time. So this is the skirt with all the materials set up, but I've only just imported it from Marvelous Designer, so there's no avatar in here. So let me go and do that under, I'm using my smart content. I'm using the same avatar that I've used for modeling. So in my case, that was the Genesis 8 female dev load in the A pose. And remember, this is not going to be for distribution. So we're not going to create a fitted garment. We're not going to do anything with D force. This is not intended for distribution. This is just so something that you can make a pretty render out of it. And by default, this is exactly the constellation we had in Marvelous Designer. We have an avatar around which the garment is modeled. So it's exactly what that looked like. So what I'd like to do now is instead of rendering this out in an A pose, I'd like to apply something that, you know, makes it maybe a little bit prettier. I'll use one of the basic poses here. Can't remember which one that was. I think it was this one here. Base pose standing C. That's the one. If I go and apply that with my Genesis figure selected in the scene tab, then she will move. But of course, the skirt will not move because the skirt doesn't care about the pose because it is not a conforming item of clothing. But what we can do now is we can go and export the posed avatar out and import that as a morph target onto the avatar that we have in Marvelous Designer. And then that pose will be struck in Marvelous Designer. We can simulate again and do the same on the way out with the skirt. So in order to do that, I've already done it, but just so that you know how it works, you first of all, hide the skirt. That's very important. If you have an avatar with skin on it, make sure you also hide the eyelashes or do whatever you did in order to export your original avatar is what I'm saying. If you if you make a mistake, if the resolution isn't correct, if there's something else in the scene, then Marvelous Designer will throw an error that the geometry does not match. So it must be exactly the same. So we go and say File Export, and then we pick where we'd like for that to go. So I'm going to go and say G8 Pose 2, perhaps just so that I've got something here. And over here, we'll select the DAS Studio preset. And that's really uh, all we need to do. There's one thing that we might want to just check if it's ticked, and that's ignore invisible nodes. And if that is ticked, then anything that's in your scene but hidden will not be part of the OBJ. And that's very important here. We don't technically need the material, so we can just go and untick that. We don't need the surfaces, because for us, it's all about the geometry. So once that's done, you can go back to Marvelous Designer and head over to File, Import, Add. You don't have to select anything specific there. Marvelous Designer will work out what the avatar is here and select Import, Add, OBJ. That now brings up a scary menu. I think was it in, where did I put that now? Uh, into here, I think. GA Post 2. There we go. I'll open that. And this comes up with a dialog box here in which you can say load type add. So that is what we want to do. We don't want to open something. We want to add something to our existing scene. And under object type, we want to import a morph target. And when you set that, Marvelous Designer will automatically recognize that this is probably supposed to be applied to the avatar. So you don't have to set anything else. The morphing frame count is the amount of frames that it takes Marvelous Designer to interpolate between the current pose and the pose that you're about to import. So it's essentially how long will it take someone to slide a slider from one pose to another. If you have a complex pose that takes the garment a lot longer to settle, feel free to increase that. That's kind of a trial and error thing. My pose is very simple, so 30 will suffice. Everything else will stay as it is while scale needs needs to be centimeters dash studio as well. But all the ones at the bottom, all the tick boxes can be unticked. And then if I hit OK, Marvelous Designer should go and pose my avatar. There we go. It started, whoops, every 3D app has different different ways of modifying the screen. Isn't it crazy? So it started simulating the skirt down here, but just to be on the absolute safe side, I would encourage you to run the simulation again. In fact, I'm going to go and run the 
the software simulation just so that the garment settles down. Once you're happy, you can stop the simulation and do essentially the same that we did in the previous episode, namely select all the pattern pieces that you'd like to export, basically exactly like before, and hit over to File, Export, OBJ Selected. And we're going to put that into my other folder here, Skirt Maps, I think that's what it was. The Skirt, The Skirt posed i'll call it just as an obj and it'll be exactly like what we did before uh, make sure it's a single object make sure all the same options are set than before so single object we want this to be thin and welded unified uv coordinates with nothing selected at the bottom we set scale for dash studio and nothing selected on the axis conversion and that is that now we're going back to Das Studio, in which we're going to make our skirt reappear and select as well, very important. And now we're going to go and import the OBJ that we've just exported from Marvelous Designer as a morph target. Since we've already got our map set up, you could just import this object and then set up the maps. But doing it this way lets you basically add different poses inside the same skirt. So it doesn't matter which way you choose to do it. You can pose first and then set up the materials just like I've explained in the previous video. Or you can do it this way by having an a post skirt that works in principle and now apply that morph target on the skirt. So with the skirt selected let's head over to edit object morph loader pro with the skirt selected. This is what it looks like and that brings up a kind of medium scary window. Don't know if you're familiar with Morph Loader Pro, but essentially it will ask Das Studio under here on the preset, you pick none, you pick the post skirt that you've just exported. Skirt maps, this skirt pose, that's the one. And then we're gonna select accept. And with a bit of luck, Das Studio should show us this, which is the success message, created morph successfully. It's also prone to give you error messages if the geometry does not exactly match. So if that happens to you, then the skirt that you've previously imported is not exactly the same as the one that you've exported earlier. And then Das Studio says, sorry, different geometry cannot put a morph target in place. Now, with the success message in place and the skirt still selected, let's head over to the parameters tab and have a look at the morphs tab here or the morphs slider. This now has a thing called the skirt posed. This is exactly the same name that I've given my OBJ file. You can rename that if you have various morphs in that item of clothing. You can head over to parameter settings and give it a different name here if you so desire. But for now we're just going to leave that as skirt post and look what happens when I crank this up to 100%. The skirt moves into the same position that it did in Marvelous Designer. And now I can go and start framing up my camera and make a render out of it. And that is how you do that. I hope this was helpful. This was not a totally comprehensive way of what you can do with it. This whole thing, Marvelous Designer to Das Studio and back and forth and with other applications in the middle and whatnot. That's a very, very complex topic. If you have any questions about a particular workflow, do let me know in the comments and I will see if I can make it happen to turn it into a video. If not, then I don't know, I'm afraid. <laughs> but if I, can, if I do know the answer, I will turn it into a video. Thank you so much for watching. If it was helpful, then please consider subscribing to my channel or even supporting me on Patreon or Ko-fi and I will hopefully see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.